Hey, greetings to you in Jesus' name. This is Brother Clinton. Welcome to my office once again. It is the sixth day of the week, the 5th of February, the year of our Lord, 2016, 5776. This afternoon, I'm inclined to speak about something that I've been wanting to speak about for a while, but I haven't. And the reason that I'm going to do it now is because of a letter that I received this afternoon. And the thing that I need to, to address is a very grave situation that's happening right now in the USSA and in the EU concerning the purposeful influx of Islamists into those nations in order to convert them into third world countries, third world nations. It's a very grave situation, as I said, and it's been happening actually for many years, but the velocity with which it has been occurring over the last couple of months is astounding. And I received a letter from a young man in Lithuania today, and I'm going to share with you a few portions of his letter and address those things. He said, you've most likely heard about the Muslim sexual assault rampage in Europe. I wanted to ask, what does a Christian do? I felt really horrible recently seeing headlines about rape and assault. He says, how should my response be? Do we participate in fighting this menace? And then he said some various things about the people that are coming into those countries. And, and then he said, on the other hand, these ungodly European countries that rejected God and embraced feminism, homosexuality, religious foolishness, and degenerate ideologies deserve to get scourged by foreigners to teach them the harsh lesson of reality. And um, then he says, I'm so conflicted on the matter. Can some of us be allowed to be like David or Samson? or the first crusaders that saved Jerusalem from the caliphate. Cal carrying out God's will by exterminating the cancer, not even talking about killing, just strive with force against them. The ones in England, the non-refugees, making Sharia law patrols, saying how they're taking over Britain, speaking things against Christ, disrespecting those who welcomed them. This boils me inside. This is among the many things that he said. And... Before I address those things, I want to make known to you that, as I made mention of in the beginning of this video, the, the influx that is occurring right now of Islamists, and by the way, I, I call them Islamists, those of us who are Christians, we ought not to call these people Muslims because they're not Muslims, they're Islamists. In other words, they're followers of Islam. Um, the definition of the word Muslim is a servant of God, a servant of Allah. And those people who follow Islam are not servants of Allah. They are servants of the devil. They're followers of Muhammad and his wicked religion. They're not servants of God. And so I don't call them Muslims for that reason. I call them Islamists, okay? Because that's what they are. They're followers of Islam. And this was, this is being done by design on purpose. And I've shared with this, I've shared this with you uh, in, in previous messages on this YouTube channel. I'm going to share it with you again. I'm going to leave a link below the in the info box to this letter that I'm about to read. It is a letter that was written by a man named Albert Pike uh, in the year 1871, and it outlined basically all three world wars. Uh, the first two have already occurred, and the third is yet to occur. And it outlined the plan. It wasn't a prophecy. It was a plan that he and his cohorts had in order to execute these world wars for the various purposes that are outlined in this letter as well. All the three, all the world wars that have happened, all the wars that have happened have been happening, have happened by design because of the global banking, oil and drug cartels and the fact that they wanted certain things done and accomplished and so they created wars in order to accomplish those things and they use the ignorant pawns who are in the various militaries, especially the U.S. military, to accomplish their purposes. So this is what he wrote about the Third World War. Albert Pike wrote this in 1871. He said, the Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agentur of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists 
and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction anxious for an ideal but without knowing where to render its adoration will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from a general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. This is a letter that was written, part of a letter that was written by Albert Pike in 1871, which is a design, a plan, for the Third World War. And if you'll read that letter at the link below, you'll see his plans, his designs for the First World War and the Second World War, and you'll see that even though they were written uh, many decades before those wars ever started, they are completely accurate, and, they, and those wars were carried out in the exact way that they planned them, and they did um, affect the goals that were stated in this letter. Okay. They, those wars happened for a reason, and the reasons that they happened were effectuated. In, effectuated, those were those things were uh, effected by the fact that those wars were carried out. Their goals were achieved. Okay, so now the Third World War is about to happen, and in order to cause the Third World War to happen, one of the things that is necessary is for the the so-called elite, the global mafia, as I call them, to infiltrate the first world nations in this world with people from third world nations to cause those nations to be destabilized and ruined and to cause them to be transformed into third world countries. That's what's happening in the USSA and in the EU. The reason I say USSA, of course, for those of you who know me, is because I call it the United Socialist States of America because the, the USSA is a socialist country. It's a socialist country. That's why I left it. I live in Costa Rica now. I'm not a rich man. Okay, I didn't uh, save up hundreds of thousands of dollars and, and come here to retire in a, in a nice mansion on the beach. But I came here to Costa Rica with what little money I had saved after I had sold everything that I had because I feared for my safety and my life there in the United States of America. And Jesus said, when they persecute you in one place, flee to another. Okay, um, The prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So for those of you who want to comment and say, well, you're afraid and that's not a Christian thing, uh, you can just save that, okay? <laughs> because the Lord showed me where the danger was, and he showed me that it was time to leave, and I left. If you disagree with that, that's your right, okay, but that's why I left. The United Socialist States of America and the various states of Europe, especially the Schengen states, are being invaded. They're being invaded by Islamists, and the Islamists are not the ones who planned the invasion. They are pawns, just like the rest of the people that are being used in this plan. The ones who planned this invasion are the ones that are hiding in their ivory towers while their puppets, who are posing as presidents and dictators of nations, uh, orchestrate this plan for them. Okay, One of those puppets is, is Barry Satoro, another one is Angela Merkel, another one is, is, is Francois Hollande. All these men are puppets. They are not the actual leaders of these countries. They are puppets who are the ones who are in the front line. They're the ones who, who take the media hit. Okay, These are the ones who are ordering because they have, been self, they have themselves been ordered to effectuate <coughs> this invasion. The reason that people are, uh, Islamists are coming from all over the place into these countries is not because, uh, definitely because of a war in Syria, although there is a war in Syria and, and the United States Corporation with the U.S. military, which is the war arm of the Vatican, is causing terrible destruction in Syria right now. And the reason they're causing terrible destruction in Syria is, well, it's for several reasons that I know of. It's, uh, it has to do with natural gas, it has to do with oil, it has to do with money, it has to do with the fact that the Rothschilds have not established a bank a central bank in Syria, uh, and they they don't like countries who don't allow them to establish a central bank and, and run their countries. So Syria, you know, Bashar al-Assad wants to remain free. He wants his people to remain free, and because of that, he's being attacked by uh, the war arm of the Vatican, which is the United States military, the British military, and so on. 
And we can see now that because Russia has allied themselves with Syria and is beginning to and has begun to take out the CIA's operatives in Syria, which are also known as ISIS, that now the um, the Turkish government, which is also allied with the United States uh, mafia in this, they are actually beginning to attack Syria because the proxy war with the ISIS stooges isn't working because Russia has been taking them out. So the proxy war isn't working, so Turkey is just getting all upset, just getting ready to go straight to war with Syria, and that's going to cause some serious effects. And, and for that reason, Syria is being attacked and destroyed because they don't want to be part of the, the Rothschild banking system and become slaves to that banking system. They just want to be a sovereign, um, um, free country. You know? And even though they're, they're Islamists, you know, they're confused and they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, that's their right to be that if they want to. But unfortunately, the Rothschild banking system doesn't see it that way. And so Syria is being destroyed, and the people in Syria are being displaced. And that is being used to the advantage of the global mafia, the global banking, oil, and drug cartels, um, by using those people as refugees and also mixing what they call terrorists in the midst of them, or militants in the midst of them, to invade the USSA and the countries of Europe. Okay, and Barry Sotoro and Angela Merkel and Francois Hollande and all the various leaders of these countries or the puppet leaders of these countries, they know this. Okay, that's why they're allowing it to happen, even though they know that this is a dangerous situation and it's ruining their countries. They know it's ruining their countries. They're ruining their countries on purpose because they don't work for the people of those various countries. They work for the global mafia under the Jesuits, under the Vatican. That's who they work for. Okay, it's called in the scripture, the mystery of iniquity. 2 Thessalonians 2 7. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he that now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Speaking, of course, of Michael the archangel, who is the prince of the people of Israel. So, but I digress from that. That's what's happening. Okay, that's what's happening. This is not an accident. The people that are protesting in the streets are wasting their time because the people in their ivory palaces don't care what the people want. Okay, the people in the, in the streets that are protesting, they can, they can gather themselves, all every single one of them together and protest. So that the people in their ivory palaces, the, the, the puppet leaders, can, can see that all the people disagree with what they're doing. That's not going to change what they're doing because they don't work for the people. They don't care about the will of the people. The only thing that would change what they're doing is for the people to stop protesting in the streets and for the people to go to the ivory towers of the puppet leaders that are ruining their countries and drag them out into the streets and hang them. That's what would have happened a couple of hundred years ago if they had tried this. But nowadays they have the people so dumbed down, enslaved, and controlled that the people won't go to the criminals who are causing this situation, pull them out of their houses and hang them in the streets. They will just protest in the streets and be stomped upon by the stormtroopers that work for the people in the ivory towers. Okay, that's the way it works nowadays. So this is happening on purpose. It's definitely happening on purpose. Now I'd like to address a couple of things. As I said earlier, people that, that serve the religion that is called Islam are not Muslims, and therefore I don't call them Muslims. Okay? They are Islamists. That's what I call them because that's what they are. They're followers of Islam. They're not Muslims. Muslim is a servant of God. Okay? A servant of God is one who believes his word and calls God by his name. His name is Jesus Christ. He has come in the flesh to save sinners. Those who do not serve God and call him by his name they're not servants of God, so I don't call them Muslims. The people in these various countries, and they're not all from Syria, by the way. Many of them are from Iraq and Iran and other countries as well. Um, but that's beside the point. These people are the sons of Ishmael. And I don't mean to generalize, because in any nation or in any, if I may use the word race of people, there are those who are good and godly people, which are the minority, of course, and those who are... Um, more conformed to the particular cultures of that race, whatever that race might be, whether it be Native Americans, whether it be African Americans, whether it be Syrians, whether it be um, North Americans, whether it be South Americans, whether it be Brazilians. Every, every so-called race of people has their culture, and, and a great many of those people are conformed to that culture, but they're not all conformed to that culture. You see, and so we cannot judge a particular person based on the color of his skin and assume that he has certain behavioral traits just because he looks like other people that have those behavioral traits. 
Okay, that's called prejudice. Prejudice is a word that means prejudging someone, judging someone based on a characteristic that they're born with that they can't help, rather than judging them based on their behavior and their actions. That's called prejudice, and that's wrong. Okay, that said, most of these people, these these Syrian people, are wild, uncultured, uneducated people. They're barbarians. Okay, and I say that not as a slander, but as a fact. These people live in the desert, and most of them, the vast majority of them, do not know God. They serve Islam, which is a religion of the devil, a religion of the sword. And the men in this religion are used to living in the desert with women who cover themselves totally in black, and the only thing that shows is their eyes. And even in that sort of a culture, the women are barbarized, the women are used and abused, the women are not respected. Um, the women are to serve the man, the women are to be beaten when they don't serve them right, the women are to be used and abused sexually whenever the man wants, and the woman, are, if she tries to defend herself against a, a rapist, she can be accused and tried for a crime, and even put to death. Um, and so, and these men are, are barbarous, they don't understand that the woman was created to be an helpmeet for the man. They don't understand that a man should love his wife even as he loves his own body. They don't understand that because they don't know God. They don't know the scripture. They don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and they're servants of the devil. And they live uh, in, in a what's called a third world country, you see. So they're not educated. They're, they're not cultured. They don't know how, they don't have respect. They don't have courtesy. They don't have those things that most of us were taught as we grew up. And so these people are like animals, and they live in that way. And then to take them from their natural habitat and to move them into countries like the USSA and Europe, where these are ungodly countries where the women are also out of control. The women walk around dressed like whores. There is pornography in the streets. Um, I was in Germany in 2009. I wrote this to this young man who wrote to me as well. I was in Germany in 2009. I was in a city called Hanau. And, or Hanau, I think it's pronounced. And right next to the hotel, there was a pornography store. And as I would walk outside the hotel, there was a mural outside the pornography store, taller than me, and probably about four meters long, of two naked women, about 19 years old, lying in a bed with each other, wrapped around each other. And then on the door of the pornography shop, there was a sign that said, you have to be 18 to enter. And I thought, well, that's kind of strange. So when I went back to the hotel, I asked the hotel clerk, why, well, pardon my ignorance, <laughs> my cultural ignorance, but why is there a sign on the door of the store next door that says you have to be 18 to enter, but there's pornography posted on the outside bigger than me? And she, she looked at me and she said, Willkommen in Deutschland. Welcome to Germany. And I thought, okay. <laughs> and that's how it is in Germany. That's how it was in, in 2009. I can't even imagine how it's progressed since then. But pornography is, is, is on the streets. Pornography is on the television, on public television where children can watch it. Pornography is everywhere. And at that time, there were a lot of Islamists in Germany as well. A lot of them. I can only imagine how many there are now. And so... And that's just an example. Germany is not all of Europe, but Germany is a major part of Europe. Germany is a, is a major world power. And the, the degradation of the lifestyle of the people in these so-called first world countries or second world countries in Germany, in, in France, in Britain, in Spain, in all these countries in Europe and also in the USSA, the lifestyle is so brazenly pornographic and sensual and demonic and devilish and when you take these men that were brought up as animals in the desert and 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 being taught to treat their women in that particular way and then you put them in, an, in a situation where the women aren't dressed in black with only their eyes showing but they're dressed like whores and like porn stars walking up and down the street how do you expect them to act Okay, I'm not in any wise justifying their actions. I'm just saying this is how these men are going to act. You can't expect these men to act cultured when they have never known such a thing. And that's why, that's a big part of the reason why they're being sent by the puppet leaders 
into these nations in order to cause the very situation that's happening right now. That's why the police have been told to stand down. For those of you who don't understand, the, with all due respect to police officers, and, and this is not the mindset of every police officer out there, but this is the fact that police officers are policy enforcers. That's why they're called police. They're there to enforce policy. They work for the corporation that owns the state. They don't work for the people in the neighborhoods. They're not there to protect and serve the people. They're there to protect and serve the corporation that owns the state. It's called fascism. and That's how the USSA and the countries of Europe are run. That's the global government that's called democracy. Democracy is fascism and communism. Okay, that's why George Bush and his, and his communist friends have all wanted to establish do, uh, uh, democracy all over the world, in every country in the world. That's why the U.S. military has bases in 130 countries in the world. Because the U.S. military is the war arm of the Vatican, and the Vatican wants democracy all over the world. Democracy is a form of government which is communist and fascist whereby a, a group of men in a room that, that, that is hundreds of miles away from you can have a meeting that you're not invited to, and they can vote that you don't have the right to own your property anymore. They can vote that you don't have the right to free speech anymore. They can vote that you don't have the right to own a firearm anymore. That's democracy. It's fascism. It's communism. And that's what they're doing. And so that's the purpose of them bringing all these so-called refugees into these countries. It's for the purpose of breaking down the society, for the purpose of causing the society to be transformed into a third world country so that they may be more easily contained and controlled. That's what Agenda 21 is all about, sustainable development. Have you ever heard the term sustainable development? Okay, it's one of those buzzwords. Sustainable development means they want to, that the global mafia wants to develop communities among the population that are more easily sustainable. What does sustainable mean? It means controllable. They are working, the, the global mafia is working right in front of your face to establish communities among the population that are concentrated in certain areas and other areas will be restricted. And those areas that, are, that the population is concentrated into will be more easily controlled by the global mafia. That's sustainable development. That's what sustainable development means. That's what Agenda 21 is all about. And Agenda 21 is called that because it's the 21st century. And that is their agenda for this century, is to create a global government. Now, this is not going to be stopped. It's not going to be stopped. It's written in the scripture that this would happen. And they all wondered after the beast and they all worship the dragon. This is what's written in the scripture. Okay, So it's not going to be stopped. It is going to happen. So how can we as Christians combat this? How can we as Christians deal with this? And this is the question that the young man wrote to me today. It made him really angry that these people were doing this to women in his own country. And rightly so. Okay? And he asked me, how can I as a Christian combat this? Okay? Now this man has a little bit to learn as far as the, the gospel of Christ and, 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 and how we conduct ourselves as Christians and how Jesus Christ conducted himself among people. But that's not, I'm not just saying that to speak against him because we all have to start from the beginning and learn from the beginning. We don't just start at the top and work our way sideways. We start at the bottom and we work our way up. That's how we learn. Okay? So how do we combat this as Christians? If you live in Germany, France, Belgium, um, Sweden, uh, or the USSA, one of the various states of the USSA, how do you combat this? If you see a man or a group of men violating a woman, how do you combat this as a Christian? Well, first of all, you don't pull out a weapon and attack the men. You don't do that because we don't render any man evil for evil. One thing that I'm... Wow, this is difficult for people that are not Christians to understand. In fact, impossible for people that are not Christians to understand. But this is the truth. Okay, We do not, as Christians use weapons or physical force to defend ourselves. And if you have any questions about that, there's a video on this channel called Self-Defense? question mark, And I'm going to leave a link to that below in the information box as well. And you're welcome to watch that video and it'll explain to you <clears throat> from the scripture what a Christian believes and how he behaves himself in situations where most people would defend themselves. It explains to you from the scripture so that there could be no doubt in your mind if you believe the scripture. That said, Christians do not take up weapons to defend ourselves or other people, or our family members, or anyone. When Peter took out his sword to defend the Lord Jesus Christ, 
And if ever there was a time to pull out a sword and defend somebody, it would have been then. Jesus Christ told Peter to put his sword back into the sheath. And he said, all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. And Jesus went to the cross as it was determined beforehand that he should. It is not a nice thing or a pretty thing to see someone being hurt, attacked, raped. And the human instinct is to make war against the person who is doing that. But the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Okay. If, some, if this happens and you walk up on a situation where a woman is being violated, this is what you do as a Christian. First of all, if you have the opportunity, and I know that this is not an effectual solution, but it may help. If you have the opportunity, call the police or shout for someone else that is nearby to call the police. Okay? Either the police will come and they will stop the situation, or the attacker will be afraid of the, of the prospect of the police coming and he will decide to not continue with his endeavor and go somewhere else. That's the first thing. Okay, the second thing is, Put yourself in between that person and the woman. Stand in front of the woman. Don't attack the man. Stand in front of the woman and speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. Now, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to give you a script for what to speak. Here's the script right here. But speak the word of God. For example, stand in front of the man and, and say unto him, Don't you know that it's written in the scripture, Thou shalt not commit adultery? Why are you lusting after this woman to commit adultery? Have you never heard of the Ten Commandments? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ who came in the flesh to die for sinners and was raised from the dead? By the precious blood of the Lamb of God we can be saved from our sins. Speak these things. This manner of speech will, will likely either cause him to run away or maybe it will even cause him to listen and come to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Although that's not likely, but it is possible. But the name of Jesus Christ and the Word of God is light. And when you're in the darkness and there's cockroaches all over the place, and then you click on a flashlight, what will happen to the cockroaches? They will scatter. They will scatter. You see? Light cannot be hidden in the darkness. Light cannot be hidden in the darkness. If you're in the darkness and you click on a light, the darkness has no power to hide that beam of light. It can't be done. When light is shining in the darkness, it will shine, and nothing can hinder it from shining. Now, I'm not guaranteeing you that the person, the attacker, will stop doing what he's doing and run away, but I can tell you that it's very likely that he will, or that he will stop doing what he's doing. But it's also possible that he will continue to do what he's doing, or it's even possible that he will attack you, and that's a situation that you put yourself in if you choose to stand in between him and that woman. But if you're a Christian, better it is that he should attack you and let the woman run away than that he should attack the woman. Okay. That said, that's how you should handle the situation as a Christian. That said, this young man made mention in his letter about the fact that he believes that these ungodly societies are deserving of this sort of chastisement from God. And that is true. Although he mentioned another point, that there may be righteous people, righteous women, in those countries who are not part of the wicked culture of that country, who would also suffer this uh, these attacks and this chastisement when it's not really their fault. And although that remains a possibility, I doubt that. Because God will not judge the righteous with the wicked. Abraham contended with the Lord about this when the Lord was going to destroy Sodom. And the Lord did destroy Sodom, and he will destroy Sodom again. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. But Abraham discussed this with the Lord, and he said to the Lord, I know that thou wilt not destroy the righteous with the wicked. And he kind of, in a way, bargained with the Lord, and he kept saying, well, what if 50 people that are righteous are in the city? And the Lord said, okay, if there's 50 people that are righteous in the city, then I will not destroy it for the 50's sake. And then, the, and then Abraham said, well, what if there would be lacking five? What if there's only 45 righteous people in the city? And so the Lord said, okay. I will not destroy the city if I find 45 there, and so on and so forth, until finally it came down to the point where it was obvious that there was none righteous in that city except Lot himself, and which was the cousin of Abraham. And God sent two angels to take Lot and his family out of Sodom 
before they destroyed it. God does not destroy the righteous with the wicked. Now, I've said many times to you before, if you're a Christian, if you're a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you must come out from among them. Okay? Because if you don't come out from among them, you'll be destroyed with them. If you're a Christian, you're, you're baptized in Jesus' name, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and you are abiding with the wicked, then you will be destroyed with the wicked. But when God calls you to come out from among them, then if you have ears to hear, you will come out from among them so that when the destruction of God comes upon them, it will not consume you. When God sent his plagues, great and wonderful, upon Pharaoh and all the children of Egypt, you can read about this in Exodus, his people were in Goshen. God's people were in Goshen, which was a city in Egypt that Pharaoh gave to Israel and his people. The people of Israel were in Goshen, and when God sent his plagues upon Pharaoh, especially the last plague of death, he commanded the people of Israel to stay in Goshen, to put the blood of the lamb that they would kill upon the doorposts of their house, and to stay in the house. And those people of Israel who obeyed that were saved, were kept free from harm. And the rest of the people in Egypt, the firstborn of everyone in their houses and their animals, was destroyed. So those of us who are obeying God, who are righteous, we will not be destroyed with the wicked. Just like when the, when the, the, the uh, Twin Towers, the World Trade Center Towers, were brought down by a controlled demolition in New York City in 2001. People, a lot of people said that they, that they felt for the innocent people who were in those towers. There were no innocent people in those towers. The people in those towers, many, most of them had nothing to do with the, with the crime syndicate that was bringing down the towers. And they weren't involved uh, firsthand in the criminal dealings that were the, the cause of those towers being brought down. But they weren't innocent people. They were wicked people who were sinners and who rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why they were brought down in those buildings. If they were righteous people, they would have been warned by the Lord, and they wouldn't have been in those buildings on that day. So all that said, yes, um, the people of the USSA and Europe are worthy of the attacks that are being carried out upon them now. Even though these things are being orchestrated by the global mafia for their own selfish purposes, what they don't realize is that they are in the hands of God, just like Nebuchadnezzar was in the hand of God when he raised the, the nation of, of, of Israel to the ground and burned the temple to the ground. You know, in Nebuchadnezzar's mind, it was his own will that he was doing this, but he was in the hand of God, and he was being used by God as the rod in God's hand you know, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, all these people were the rod in God's hand to bring destruction upon his people Israel for their disobedience. And the people of Europe and the USSA have so degraded themselves before the living God and embraced every form of false religion, every form of pornography and harlotry, every form of witchcraft, every form of sodomy and sexual perversion, every form of murdering children that they have become a stench in the nostrils of the living God. And God is allowing this to happen and causing this invasion to happen of the European countries and the USSA in order to bring down these countries, to humble them, to bring them down to the ground. If peradventure any people among them might see this destruction and humble themselves before the living God and believe his word and be saved. This is what's happening. This is why, this is the reason why People of Europe and USSA, this is the reason why these barbarians are being imported into your countries to rape your women and, 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 and attack your men and rob you and turn your country into a third world country. Because you have exalted yourselves as Capernaum, but you shall be brought down to hell. And this is just the beginning stages of it. So if there are any among you in the USSA and Europe who fear God, then turn to him. Humble yourself before him. Believe his word. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And turn to him. Turn from your sins. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. And God will cause you to speak with other tongues and prophesy. And you'll be filled with power. And you'll never be the same again. And you will inherit the kingdom of God if you continue on in obeying the word of God. But if you continually refuse to hear the word of God, then I want you to hear what Jeremiah said by the word of the Lord concerning those nations. He says, At what instant I shall speak, this is in Jeremiah chapter 18, starting verse 7, 
At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom, to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it? If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it? If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. And people of the USSA and Europe, this is what is happening to you right now. This is what is happening to you right now. You have left off to hear the words of the living God. You have left off to fear him. You have left off to serve him. And you have embraced every form of abomination and exalted yourselves in pride. In your abomination, in your filth, you have exalted yourselves in your pride. And then you go into your Catholic and your Anglican and your Protestant churches and worship the gods of your imagination and make up doctrines that have nothing to do with the doctrine of Jesus Christ, and deny the Lord Jesus Christ in the house that is called by his name, and say that you are free to do all these abominations. And your worship and your prayers and your filth has come up as a stench before the living God, and he has set forth his hand, he has sent forth his hand to destroy you. And now these barbarians will come into your countries more and more, and they will rape your women, and they will pillage your businesses, and they will ruin your land, even as the locusts will ruin the land as a plague. And your countries will be brought low to the ground and destroyed. That's what's happening, and that's what's going to continue to happen. And you as nations will not repent, but there may be a few of you here and there that will repent, and that's what this message is for. In the name of Jesus Christ, I remain here for you as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, if I may be of service to you. This is Brother Clinton. I'm out.